Item A is a new teacher development and support systems discussion. Mr. Hounsen will present information about the new teacher development and support systems. Well, as we enter spring, we start entering the season of filling staff positions for next year for those who are leaving and also finishing up uh, as we come closer to this year. I thought it'd be a good time to talk about with you what we do for staff new to our district, as, as the title says, to both uh, support them and develop them as professionals. As Dr. Zal says all the time, we're in the people business. So the, uh, the ability to put high quality teachers in our kids' classrooms, as we all know, is a key determining uh, factor in student achievement. So uh, this is an important part of what we do. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about what we do here in the district. First of all, just some hiring information that I thought you might find interesting. Uh, this is hiring information from 2001 through this past year, August of 2013. Uh, there are 318 hires uh, that I looked at here, and I would limit this to K-12 classroom teachers. So I pulled out all of the counselors, principals, uh, some of the adult ed stuff. This is just K-12 classroom teachers because that's primarily what these programs focus on. So this is the population we want to look at. So 318 hires. You can see there are 138 new teachers. Uh, 108, 180 hires were made with teachers that had uh, previous experience coming into the district. Um, Altogether, you see 86 and 107 of those uh, two groups still with the district. That's 61% of our hires uh, that have been retained uh, over time. And with the experienced teachers, those are either ones that are still with the district or finished their career with us and ended up retiring from Rolla Public Schools. So they stayed with us, which I thought was really good. Um, you can see down there, uh, I've got the number that have moved out of the district but have continued, and there are several of those. Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's normal. Also, the university effect is real for us here. We get lots of families that have one or the other, uh, uh, a spouse of someone going to the university that are here for a short time. And uh, we gladly take uh, the best teachers we can find, knowing at times that they may not make a career out of it here, but while we have them here, we have very high quality teachers. So we do have some that come and go with the university. Uh, that bottom number there is really uh, kind of what this is about. It's people getting into the job and then leaving the profe uh, profession. <clears throat> uh, what I found is about 14% of new teachers leave after the first year. That number goes up to a third. Uh, all new teachers leave the profession after the first three years, and then when you get up to, by the, uh, by the five-year mark, you get up to about 46% of all new teachers leave uh, the field of education. So it's a national issue. You can see our numbers here locally. That 19 out of 138 uh, new hires, that represents 14% of our new hires that ended up leaving the profession prior to hitting that five-year mark. Um, as you see, we also have some people that move here with some experience that move on to other uh, professions as well. That 11 represents only those 6% of the experience hire. So as you might expect, we do see it more with the new teachers coming in than the ones coming with some, with some experience. So uh, that's to be expected. In case you're wondering, that's, that, that's that, less than one a year over the time period here, right? Yeah, experience it's teachers? a 13 years, so f how many did we lose? 11. 11 of the experience. Yeah, 11 of the experience, yeah. Um, and just how that works out, that's about, that total 318 hires, that works out to about 25 new hires a year, which is, you know, about typical for us. So you can kind of see how that breaks down there. So what I wanted to do, I picked out these five main programs that we'll look at and how we implement them. Uh, in the district, so we'll talk about each one uh, separately here. Now, when, when I say these programs, as I mentioned earlier, these programs are kind of twofold. One, they're to support uh, new teachers coming into the profession, uh, but also the development part is very uh, important to us. We want to get them to their maximum teaching capabilities as fast as we can. We also want to get them to the point that they're if they are going to make a decision about whether this field uh, is the right one for them or not, we want them to have, we want them to know fully what's expected to be a teacher at Rolla Public School so that so they can make up their mind early mm -hmm. if this is something they want to make a career out of. So 
Uh, there's a lot of things we're trying to do. Now, the very first time we get to work with our new teachers is the back-to-school training. Uh, they are here seven days, seven contract days prior to school starting. The first three, we have them here by themselves with just all the new teachers. Uh, and then they're here the four contract days where all teachers come back for the, for the days prior to that. Now, during that time, this is very much an, uh, I guess, education period about uh, just what it means to be a teacher here. We, we cover uh, board policies with them. We cover curriculum and instruction, kind of language that we use in the district and practices that we use in the district. Uh, they get six hours of technology training during this time, and that's some beginning smart board training, but it's also just understanding how to use our email system, phone system, copiers, infinite campus, my big campus, electronic grade book. It's lots of learning how to do the basic things that we do during this time. It's also just getting an understanding of what it means to be a teacher at Rolla Public Schools, some district awareness, getting to know all of us, getting to know the principals, they meet all of you during that time. Um, and uh, as you can imagine, we want to teach them everything in three days. And there are times where they're on information overload. We, there's a lot that we throw at them those first three days. And I'm going to talk at the end about some thoughts that we have about how we're, we always want to look at how we do this better. And at times we may overwhelm them some, but there's just a lot that needs to be covered during those first few days, and they're, they're just going to be busy. So that's really the first, that's kind of the first step in, is in getting them off to a uh, good start here. Probably the main program uh, of a couple that I would consider main programs, the mentor-protege program. I put those first two bullets up here. It's a structured and formal program, and it's forward planning and discussion. So uh, this, is a, this is not a buddy teacher that you go to for assistance. The mentor-protege program is a structured program. The mentors are paid stipends, so it's, it's an additional pay on your salary. So with that, obviously, comes some expectations. The analogy that I sometimes use is that these new teachers are beginning an expedition. We want the mentor to serve as a guide that's going to plan their route, but also be there with them along the way, leading them through and assisting should they need help. It's not plan their route, send them on their way, and say, call me if you run into anything and you need help, and I'll come help you. Okay? This mentor-protege program is not come see me when you need something. It's regularly scheduled meetings. It's looking ahead to the things coming up for the new teachers, talking about them before they get there. Uh, the, the mentors are experienced teachers that know these things and can help uh, talk about things before they get there, things like parent-teacher conferences, even things that might seem trivial, such as budgeting and supply orders. Okay? I stress all the time to the mentors, the protégés, they don't know what they don't know. We're all like that when we get into it. So. They may be wanting to ask all the questions in the world. They simply don't know what questions to ask. It's our job as a district to answer those questions before they have them and help them along the way. Uh, so it's not a buddy teacher. It's, it's planned ahead. It's regularly meetings. It's uh, topics to cover with them. And it's a structured program. Okay? Um, it includes various classroom observation models. We want the... Uh, mentor to be in the protege's class observing, giving them feedback. And that's a non-evaluative observation. This is not part of the evaluation system. We want the protege to be completely comfortable with the mentor in there. So this is giving feedback. This is meeting afterwards, discussing how it went. It's, pro it's a professional that they can be comfortable with and sharing uh, things that they think they can improve on. Okay, So it's, it's very much a growth model. We also want to turn that around. We want the protege going into the mentor's classroom and observing how they are teaching and getting some f and feedback there on how they can apply it. We also want the protege out observing others in the building. Uh, it doesn't even have to be at the same grade level or same subject, but other good quality teachers to get as many experiences as they, as they can observing teachers uh, throughout the building. Uh, at the high school, the science teacher, they, she took a day. We, we'll give them, we get them release time, we'll hire subs, and she traveled around and went to seven different classes in all the subject areas 
and said when she was done, it was one of the most valuable things that that protege did, was getting out to see how other teachers do it in their classroom, and it really helped her transition into her. So we think that's uh, very important for them to do, and we stress that. The protégés do have a professional development plan for those first two years. We prescribe it to them. It's already done for them. We have several items on their professional development plan built for them. They will work through that with their mentor, through all of those, and with their building principal, uh, and cover all the, the things that we've identified. Now, obviously, there's also, a, also within this, as you know, the new teachers receiving what I would call informal support everywhere, from their principal, from the other teachers on their team, from the other teachers on their grade level. Okay, so it is very much, there are times, obviously, when they're going to say, I need help, help me with this. We don't want that to be the only level of support they're, that they're receiving. Okay, so we want to lead them through a lot of questions that they have before they get there. Uh, that, it is two years that they're in that. Okay, and that's required for any teacher in Missouri that they spend two years in a mentor-protege program. Another one that we have, this is the fourth year for what we call the New Teacher Academy. This is for teachers new to the profession coming to Rolla. Uh, we meet with them for three afternoons. We, do, we hire subs again, release time for them to come over uh, to central office, and Mr. Henshaw and I facilitate those meetings. You can see there the types of topics that we want to cover with them as a group, and you'll see those top several are very academic-related and school-related. Uh, Stacy Reed comes in and talks with them about special ed. You'll see professionalism there. Mr. Henshaw and I go through some things about what it means to be a professional educator, to, to spend your life teaching kids and, and working with kids that come through. There are some expectations for that and some best practices, we think. So we share all of that. Communication skills, curriculum instruction and assessment items. Uh, but we also want to cover those bottom three are also some personal things that new teachers sometimes deal with. Time management on the new job, uh, health and wellness and taking care of yourself and not letting yourself get run down and stressed out to the point that you're not effective. Uh, and then also uh, networking and discussion. One of the most valuable things we found out of this new teacher academy, well, the most valuable are the, obviously the information Mr. Henshaw and I give them. <laughs> but right below that would be, these, all of them, we, we acknowledge with this group the uniqueness of what they're going through in their first years of teaching. And we put out there, a lot of people struggle with this. And, you, and, and it, it's just reality. We'll tell them the numbers of people leaving the profession. This, I think, they have the ability to share that journey with others who are going through the same thing. Um, Kelly and I try very hard to create an atmosphere where they can share the struggles that they're having, uh, the successes that, that have kind of that picked them up along the way, and share that experience with others who are going through the same thing, because it is a very unique experience. And I think by the end of that third meeting, there's somewhat of a bond there of, of the group going through this together and at times relying on each other to laugh a little bit when uh, in the throes of winter the year gets a little long during those, that first year. So uh, we have, as I said, this is the fourth year. We've kind of changed this every year. Of course, one of the challenges we do have, if you look up there at, for instance, classroom management, you know, this year's group, we had a kindergarten teacher all the way up through all the grades to a high school science teacher teaching some upper-level science courses. Well, classroom management in a, in a high school science class looks a lot different than classroom management in a kindergarten class. So we try to give things that fit everyone. Not everything fits perfectly with all grade levels. On classroom management, we try to share some basic best practices that would be part of good classroom management no matter what age kids. It's not a system, uh, not a particular technique, just philosophies behind what good classroom management looks like that they can take and apply to their grade level. But that is a challenge at times with the range of uh, teachers that we might have in there. Next, on the training side, technology training. Our new teachers are required uh, 15 hours of technology training. Six of that, as I mentioned, comes in back-to-school workshops. 
Uh, we do uh, more release time to half day trainings that uh, Ginger, Brenda, and Linda work with them on, uh, and that's all the things that you hear them talking about working with teachers. It's the whiteboards, it's the mobile devices, it's instructional techniques within uh, the classroom. It's all those things that we've talked about, uh, but it's for new teachers only uh, together. And then they can also choose uh, topics of interest in three, three of the after school sessions to complete their 15 hours. So I said it's a wide variety of topics. This, this uh, amount of training is new this year. This is the first year we required this much. Uh, but again, we think it's valuable for them getting into it to, to hone those skills now and apply those going forward. Uh, there's also some support visits by the instructional technology folks in there uh, to get into their classroom special with them to help them out. You know, I think the last thing we had is the PBTE, the performance-based teacher evaluation process. Uh, our evaluation process is developmental in nature to help teachers develop and become better in addition to meeting, obviously, the need for evaluation and hiring decisions. Okay, we, we have built both components into our process. Uh, we spend some time with the new teachers in the New Teacher Academy talking about this. We help them build their portfolio, which is a chance for them to start building a professional identity and identifying what's important to them as teachers and what their strengths are and things that they need to work on. Uh, as part of our evaluation process, there's the obvious observations and feedback with the building uh, administ administrators. Uh, there's a self-reflection piece in there uh, where they video themselves and watch it and reflect. And we'll tell them beforehand, it may be the most uncomfortable thing you've ever done, uh, <laughs> but the learning that can come from it is really important. So there's some self-reflection there. Uh, as part of that is some student and parent feedback where they send out a questionnaire or survey and get some feedback uh, back from them. Uh, professional development plans we mentioned earlier. And there is a higher level of support for new teachers built into our plan than for uh, more experienced tenured teachers. And what we'll find, the, the administrators are all, we, are all aware of this. The amount of times they go in and the type of feedback they give is a little different than for the tenured teachers. But, the evaluation process, when we talk about that, it's not purely evaluating for hiring and firing. It's very much a developmental and growth process as well, uh, the feedback and conversations that the administrators have with those new teachers. So in summary here, as I mentioned, we're always trying to get better at what we do. Uh, as part of the mentor protege program, every year we have a we have a meeting uh, toward the end of the year where we try to get feedback from the mentors and proteges on their experience, on things that we can do better. At next week's district uh, professional development committee meeting, that's what we'll be doing is reviewing the feedback that we got from the mentors and proteges to see if we need to change our system in any way or change any part of the program to improve it. And they had some good suggestions this year that we'll probably look at uh, minor changes to improve that program. You might have heard me mention uh, release time and we hire subs for them uh, several times in there. There's certainly a balance between the amount of training that they need uh, and the time, though, that we're asking them to spend out of the classroom. I think it could be pretty easy that we could go overboard on what we do. So. Uh, along with, basic, mainly it's me for the New Teacher Academy and Ginger for technology is the release time that we're pulling them out of their classroom. So she and I have sat down to make sure we aren't overdoing it. We'll review that at the end of the year. We'll get some feedback from the new teachers on how they felt. Was it too much? Uh, is there a better way to do it? But there, there is a balance there of what we're wanting to accomplish with them, but having them out of the classroom. We've got to be careful with that. All of this, we want to build a continuous program of support and growth that they feel supported all the way through. And I've got reflective practitioners on there. We want to start them out with our very strong belief that to be good at this for a career, you need to be reflective each year or continuously about how you can get better and spend some time really evaluating what you're doing in the classroom with kids and 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 seeing if there's some things you could do to improve. When you stop doing that, obviously we stop getting better. So we want to, from the very first year, have them hear that message can, uh, over and over again about the value 
of being a reflective practitioner and trying to get better every year until you finish your career. And we think that's important. We want this to fit into our overall uh, district goal of attracting and retaining the absolute best teachers that we can for our kids. And we want this to be a part of it. Uh, we're going to attract the best ones here. We want to develop them and grow them and, and make them uh, uh, understand the value that they have in our school, school district. Obviously, the community plays a part in making a decision to settle here and stay here. I can attest to that. I thought I'd be here for a year or two, and, and this is 21. Uh, so the, the, the value of living in Rolla has a large part to do to that. The leadership abilities that we give to teachers, the ability to have input into the things that we do here in our uh, school improvement plans, uh, the professional development days, identifying things that will help them, they have a part in that. I think that's important. So I think that all fits together. We're trying to do this part for the teachers coming new to the district to help with that and grow good teachers that want to come here and stay here and do good things. So be happy to take any questions or comments you might have about things we're doing here. So this is year two or year three of the Teacher Academy? This is year four. Four, wow, time is flying. Uh, this year we had 15 uh, teachers, of the ones that we hired this year, 15 of them were <coughs> new to the profession. Mm -hmm. As I said, it ranged from kindergarten uh, up to high school and every school in between. So it was a really good group this year. They, uh, do they tend to sort of stay with that cohort? I mean, does that, that group sort of hang together as they, they move on, or do they get really sort of... I don't know that I would... Uh, I hope they develop relationships mm -hmm. to the point that they feel comfortable. On the last meeting, one thing that Kelly and I told them is, we get a lot out of this, too, understanding what it is that new teachers are going through and how we can help. It also helps, I think, as I said, as we, uh, as teachers are seeking leadership opportunities and want to be involved on some of the committees that we have and, ser and mm -hmm. serving, uh, it helps to have built that relationship right from the beginning because I already know their, their abilities and they feel comfortable, I think, coming and talking with us about ideas they have. I think it's really good in having them feel a comfort level uh, in knowing that district-wide their values are, or their opinions are valued and they feel comfortable sharing and stepping out and wanting to assume those leadership <coughs> positions. I, I think that helps. Uh, that'd be a good question. I don't know. I think the bond is so tight with the people they work with in, in the, the building, building yeah. at grade levels. Yeah. That probably takes precedence over this, but I hope there are some good relationships formed there and, th and they feel a comfort in the school district because of it. I, I don't want them to feel isolated. I want them to feel very much a part of us, and I think this helps. I think it helps uh, them understand, it gives them a basis for some understanding of different buildings because they're all, they're all teachers, but the responsibilities and the, and the duties of a high school teacher compared to, I think if, if you start out as an elementary teacher or a high school teacher and that's all you are associated mm -hmm. with, you, have, you tend to have a much narrower view. Uh, you don't understand the issues even simple things like as a high school teacher, if that's all you've ever done, you never really realize that there's a group of teachers that have to walk kids to the bus. Or that you going know. to lunch is a major, op is a right. major <laughs> obstacle to begin yeah, the year. Vice as a high school versa, teacher, you know, that, that vice, doesn't enter Vice your versa, yeah. elementary teachers sometimes, some elementary <clears> teachers, <throat> if they haven't been around it, don't realize the nighttime activities that a high school teacher is involved in maybe is mm -hmm. more so and, and the responsibilities of of those type of activities, clubs, organizations that, that are much more uh, active. So I think it gives them a view that way. Also, when you do have uh, uh, team meetings, uh, obviously you may end up in a committee. You may end up where you, you are working with that person two years later and you, you have that. So I think those benefits we're going to see as those we are, continue. Those are long-term benefits we're going right. to see over time, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, what it surprises, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. you know what surprises me is the percentage uh, of people who leave the profession. I've often thought, I'm surprised at that number. It seems high to me. Um, because back when I was in teacher training, you didn't get dropped into the classroom until student teaching. And I know with the universities now, you know, they've got the kids going in and doing. Um, Both our kids are in the statewide freshman year. 
Statewide, though, it's still uh, five years is 50 percent. 50 percent of the people oh, that's that go in. But I would also tell you this. If you look at the typical business world, how many times do people change professions? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think it's... Too often. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think... Probably not unique to education. Right. It's not it unique. It is an issue. <clears throat> well, even though it's an obstacle, I'm... I'm impressed when you add in, you mentioned we've got a little bit of a transient population with the university. You add that into the mix, and if our numbers are still running ahead of the state, that to me serves back to the quality of the school district and giving people reason to be here. So we hope so. Yeah. That's sure what I'd like to think. I think you guys do an exemplary job yeah, of, of picking the right ones to bring in the front door to begin with. Yeah. Well, it's, it starts with the board. Your goals back here about attracting and retaining staff uh, been has been, it's, and, and the fact that when we show you the Camdenton salary survey, you've taken care through your support of everything from the business side that, that, that would keep a person from taking off for reasons. That if they're going to leave, they're going to leave for reasons related to a spouse. You know, the university, we've got, and as Craig said, we'd rather have two, two years with a great teacher affiliated with that kind of relationship than with anybody else. So we, right. we know that going in. When I first came to central office in 1998, I hired 55 new teachers. Mm-hmm. At the time, th- there was a shortage of teachers because the economy in the late 90s was really at a, and so people were going out because they could make more money doing other things. And when the economy retracts, you know, education is still a constant, and, and because we, we compensate better than most in this area, we're able to recruit the best of those. So you can see now we're, recru- we're recruiting far fewer teachers. We, the the number working. of people that apply for us is 30-fold what it was back then, but because of the ability and how easy it is electronically, and, and, and therefore the pool is, is, is better. So but that's... that's kudos to, to them and the support has to come from here the fact we're able to, to take a teacher who's worked somewhere else and place them on our salary schedule we, we made that decision years ago mm-hmm. uh, instead of only bringing in so many years it, it's been tremendous uh, for us but you can see too we had a stigma that we were only hiring uh, veteran teachers we never hired any first year mm-hmm. teachers well the numbers are there that prove I've heard that time and time again, so it's simply not the case. It's, it's really nice to have a balance of both. I, I wouldn't want to hire only one of, mm-hmm. you know, sure. the pool. Where do you draw the line, though, um, if you hire a second-year teacher taught someplace else the first year, or maybe you hire a teacher who's taught three or four years in another district who maybe didn't have this as great of opportunity mm-hmm. as they might have here? General, do you, do you offer do, this to some of those general, schools? What I do is first and second year teachers, if they've taught one year and come here, then we have them go through. Typically, if they've taught three or four years somewhere else, I don't. That may be something that we need to review and look at. Um, The group size that we've had so far, it's been 12 to, I don't know, 12 to 18, probably, so anywhere in there, which has been a pretty good size. Uh, but that may be something we need to consider. We haven't. I've, it's been first and second year teachers only. Well, that taught might one be an year. Optional thing. Yeah, would, yeah that would could you be. Find this helpful. And, and it's, and it's, and it's, and it's been to individualized too. Uh, uh-huh. For example, I did have one teacher who had taught four and a half years and then left the profession to stay home and raise a family and came back after <laughs> nine. I did have them go through it. I mean, <laughs> they're almost like a all new again. again. Yeah, it had been long enough that I thought I think you would uh, get some value from this. So we do kind of uh, play it by ear is probably the wrong oh. uh, wrong phrase, but we do look at it. Yeah, we look at each individual yeah. teacher because we had one teacher that was new this year uh, to the profession, but the duties that they are that they were hired to do. Uh, are, are the scope is so much smaller uh, that, to be quite honest, we made the decision that bringing them to this meeting wasn't going to benefit them near as much as for the amount of time, for the amount of time it was going to take. So it, it was a person who uh, was a more mature uh, person that had done several different uh, professions that tied directly into what we hired him for. So they had experience, not teaching experience in the classroom, but had a wide variety. 
And so we felt very comfortable with that person, and, and, and they've flourished uh, very well. So we try to look at each individual person and make that decision. We don't say two years that you, you can't get in if you, you know, we're, we're trying to balance that because uh, we want them all to be successful, very successful. So the hard part is out of three meetings, we space them out during the year. Well, you want to put everything in the first meeting because they're all. <laughs> vital you know how can we not cover that during the first one they have to know that well there's a whole list of you have to know that so uh, we take the broader view of it's all uh, training over time and uh, obviously they're getting a lot of support from their mentors and from their principals from their teachers so uh, we may lose focus sometimes that this is all they're getting and the new teacher academy is by no means all they're getting they're getting a lot of support elsewhere but this is a supplement we did this as a supplement to the mentor protege process to kind of take care of a lot of the things that are more district wide uh, day to day stuff we still leave to the building. A couple other things that we've also done just in the last two years that I think will also help in this. Um, the state, you, you, new teachers are required to go through a certain amount of training even with the state after they're hired. Um, to meet some criteria in their first five years. Um, we've started, one of the options was to attend a three-day session that took them out of class three day, full days. Um, those trainings have become online available, and so we've directed them toward that so they're not out of the classroom. So we're really trying to make an effort to keep them in the classroom, but still get them that valuable training. So. We've directed our new teachers to online training and Saturday trainings at universities as opposed to three more days out of class. Um, another thing we started doing last spring, so we've done it three times now, is to actually meet with student teachers that are in our district. Um, bring them over and share with them things that maybe they've heard it in a classroom, but we feel like we may have a little bit different take on it, and now they're in our classrooms, and to, so to start training those people even earlier, because uh, we do hire some people that student teach with us, the next year they're going to be a new teacher, so we want to give them one more opportunity to, uh, to get a, a fresh start or a, a early start in their, in their growth. It sounds like this is really unique to our district, and I like that, that it's not Somebody in Jefferson City dictating right. what you have to do or what these teachers have to do. And I, yeah. A lot of it is built on the feedback. That, that first group, I guess, was kind of guinea pigs. Uh, <laughs> Sherry Norman helped a lot build this during her uh, internship. And so since then, each year we get a little feedback and we try to make it fit what they need. We, I, I don't want this to be what I think they need. Oh, that, well, I shouldn't say that. That's probably part of it. Uh, but I want them at the end to be able to say this is the value I got out of it this I wish we would have done more of this less of this you know Kelly and I said we try to build a, a atmosphere where they're free to talk well it's still there too assistant superintendent sitting in the room with them so right. we've talked about a way to maybe remove ourselves and put someone else if if that's going to be an issue that they're afraid to share some of the struggles they're having we want to try and remove mm -hmm. that barrier this year I thought uh, was the best year we've had as far as just sharing and, and them feeling comfortable doing that so yeah I really uh, appreciate your comments and that I hope that is uh -huh. true you know they feel comfortable and like trying to keep it down to the number of times they're out of their classroom because I don't know to a new teacher just preparing your classroom <laughs> for someone else is so stressful. Yeah, and we know. tell them that during the very mm -hmm. first meeting is <laughs> one of the goals is we want you to know how to prepare sub plans mm -hmm. to be out of the building. <laughs> so we're going to do it for you. We're going to make you do it. But mm -hmm. we kind of laughed and break the ice there a little and bit. And I don't so. think any of us should ever forget how stressful that first year is. Uh, I, you know, it's yeah. just. Okay. Great. Thank you.